What's up YouTube? Welcome to another series here. I've got the London system for you guys. This is an opening that's special to me. I think it's a big reason why I became a grandmaster. Uh, I think I'm very good at the opening and I've got some tips and tricks that I'm hoping to teach you guys along the way here as we start at 800 ELO and work our way up. I will only be able to include the games with the white pieces, of course, but I decided to run this uh, series idea anyway, so if you see some jumps in rating, that's probably why. Enjoy the series. All right. The London. I've played this guy before, I'm pretty sure. Recognize the username. Um, I can't remember if we played a London or not, though. Okay. Can't really complain about these kind of positions, can we? Here, b5 will happen. And then a4, maybe c4. However, if I go here, I'm curious about this. How do we keep something to play for? Because the position looks kind of nice right now. Can't quite go here. Hmm, Mikey Slice, thanks for the host uh, there, buddy. Really trying to think how we want to progress here. The night here for now. You find it hard to make plans in these kind of positions. Fair. I do as well. <laughs> The main thing I look for when I'm making a, a plan or some idea is an imbalance. An imbalance that I know I have potential to outplay from. For example, if bishop d6, knight takes, knight takes, even if we end up trading bishops. Like, once I take this knight, I know that at least I have an advantage that I can try to outplay from. Right? Pawn here, have the two bishops, even if I don't have the two bishops, c4 and takes will probably... Uh, um, give me a uh, pawn majority on the queen side. I mean, this is a good move. He should definitely be playing that. Maybe too fancy? I can't tell. Might be a little too fancy. I'm gonna go here. Like, yeah, you can definitely do this. Bishop g5 is always gonna be a little annoying for him. In that case. And I think I'm gonna go for e4 now. Because if he takes, yes, I lose my bishop pair, but he's got a weak pawn on c6 there. So I don't think he wants to take this. Yeah, queen b6 I don't think was right. Um, he doesn't have bishop d6 anymore. b8 is covered. Let's 
go here. Give him the option to take. He can also push. If he goes here, I'll play bishop g5, which is, I believe, annoying. <laughs> Again, we're not better here, but we're putting ourselves at least in a position where we can try to outplay a little bit. Like e5 at least gives uh, some play for both sides. He's about to put the knight here. Queen c5 is very interesting. Don't really understand this move. Bishop d2 and then f4. Bishop d2 is nice so that, you know, when he's thinking about this, at least I have b4. Let's go ahead and connect those. Maybe get our king out of the uh, line of fire here. I'm really expecting his knight to go to c5. And there it goes. I think it's time to vacate that particular diagonal. No, he's got a protected pass pawn. I'm also the one that can sort of play on the uh, on the king side a little bit, and I think getting my bishop involved is a big part of that. Let's start with this. Make him think I'm focused on the middle when actually I'm trying to get this and maybe h4, h5, swing the rook to h3. Couple threats here, and Bishop H4 is coming. Let's stutter step so that we gain the tempo. Bishop here will drop uh, the pawn, and I think now he has to be a little concerned about uh, his king. Not so easy because if he plays H5, I'm playing G4. I don't care. <laughs> There's nothing going on anywhere else. If he plays bishop e7, not only can I continue, but there's a free pawn for me, so. Mm, I don't think I really mind taking that. Bring our king in. Let's try this. This looks a little tricky. I'm low on time, and I'd I'd love to get him in a spot where he's just fully pinned, you know? Like, this is great. He's completely stuck, right? A4, A5 just wins now. D3, A5.
Put a rook on d6. Remove that in case. GG. Plus five. We're on our way to twenty five hundred. Let's keep going. Three mates in one there. One, two, three, four is my count. Five. Five mates in one. Okay, so c5 now, e3. I've had this a few times. Um, let's go knight c3, knight b5. So the reason that people play this line is, I mean, truthfully, it is, it's good for black, but there's also a there's like a, a draw, right? Rook b1 takes, rook a1, rook b1, rook a1, right? And it's just like, draw, 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 draw. So a lot of people play it because of that. Um, but what I like to do is, let's go here, is I like to repeat, of course, but I mean, look, everyone's playing this to draw. So when I'm actually trying to win, I'll play c4. And I don't think the engine is like in love with, uh, with this particular line that I play, but every time I played it, I don't know, it's kind of worked out. So this is pretty much all forced. And the knight, okay, it doesn't have like tons of squares to go to. And because he chose this one, I'm already looking at um, d5, right? If he goes here, maybe I'm happy to trade. So I have two pawns. I've taken the rook. So I am up, a, a, you know, I'm up the exchange for these two pawns. And if he gets my knight for free, I'm going to be in bad shape. But I'm going to have a rook for a piece and two pawns if, if that happens. So here I'm probably going to go just knight here. Knight e5 uh, is an idea. d5 now is a big threat because the knight only has one square left. And f6 is well, just kind of like a not so not so great looking move, put it that way. Not exactly a move you're proud of. Bishop d3. I think I'm happy enough with it. It's a while before you get that knight, and b6, bishop b7, okay, I can always play knight takes b6, so this is just one of these lines that I have ready for when people are just really trying to draw, like just draw their head off by uh, taking that pawn and going back and forth. h4 is a nice looking move as well. Takes, takes, knight f4, bishop e4, hit that pawn, and again, I'm dealing with someone who doesn't have any of his pieces out, so I have to play quite actively. Yeah, rook a1 also keeps the knight from just jumping in. And remember, if my rook's on a1 and he plays a6, my knight escapes with b6, so it's not really an option for him. But I think rook a1 and rook b1 are probably my next two moves. The other way to play is to go here. The knight has to go there. Take it and try to go h4. But it's not how I usually play. Usually I go rook a1, rook b1. So just having to think here. Bishop e4 is also a nice move. I assume he wants to go here. Bishop e4, knight there. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Hmm. Not even that, I mean, I can just go rook a1 as well. Yeah, bishop e4 feels like a very good looking move. Feels right. So if I go rook a1 after knight there, how do you defend this pawn? I can't, right? So I'm gonna go here. And if knight there, rook a1. If you move the pawn, my knight escapes. 
Surely that's not a good option. Ah, okay. Well, at least here we have this knight takes b6 idea. So we know that we're always, uh, we're always getting that knight out. I like h4 a lot here. Um, again, if knight here, I have rook a1. But h4 I'm a big fan of. I want to maybe gain some more space over there. Okay, and a move like this, this is what we want, right? This is the holy grail of the position. I finally get to uh, trade just knight for knight. And what's left is, okay, it's two pawns and a bishop, but I think it's a pretty reasonable one for me. Okay, let's just throw this one in there. Actually, let's play h5. I like me some h5 here. Do that. I mean, I assume he's just gonna move the king or something, but we more or less accomplished what we want to do. Uh, g4, g5. I think I need to be still pretty, um, pretty aggressive with my moves. I want to play this. How do we make that happen? So D5. I really want to play this to shake things up in the position. If he moves the bishop, then it's possible H6 is a nice move. Yeah, for the moment, maybe I'm kind of tying the knight down, but not really. Yeah, how is h6 here? I'm gonna say this is a move you play, because if he goes here or here, okay, long term, that pawn is uh, probably a little bit annoying. I do not like this guy, the way it is. This guy's really annoying, let's play rook a3. Ooh, forgot this one defended that. Let's play e4. Big move. Big time move. e5, huge threat. And yeah, if he goes here, I think we have to play this, right? Just like full, <laughs> full craziness. G4, G5, the full send. We're playing against uh, this guy here, trying to. Where do we wanna put this guy? Tough to tell. I'm gonna put it here. There are five connected pass pawns, yes. You are not wrong. Yeah, I don't like that this was a check. That's what I regret. I regret it all. I'm gonna give up my rook. Unfortunately, it does not work in the slightest, but yeah, I've been waiting for him to find this move for a while. Yeah. We get a queen, but we lose the game. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the time situation, I, I had to do something a little drastic there. Whereas cooler heads, I think, would have prevailed and maybe, maybe even just taken this. But given that I had, like, not so much time, I thought that the correct decision was to just go, like, obviously insane um, here, but... Yeah, king d1, though, I really regretted. I'm not sure if there was a better square for it, though. King here, king here runs into that. Those are no good. These two moves are the same. And then king here, the fact that this is always with a check, did not like. 
and I don't know, maybe King E1 was the best, but I didn't like the idea of the king on the open file. So maybe it was the best, I'm not sure. Anyway, it was a fun game. Um, yeah, definitely everything, got everything we wanted from the opening here, that's for sure. Um, I think after this move that this is correct. Um, I just can't remember after knight g5. Ah, bishop d3. Okay. Yeah, that's good to remember. I knew that something went a little wrong because he's not supposed to be able to play knight e6 so easily. So black's actually much worse after knight g5, bishop d3. The knight's threatening to be trapped. And if you play something like f6 or whatever, I'm basically playing the same game, but like 10 times better, right? I'm going to play all the same moves, but I'm uh, many, many tempi ahead. So... Yeah, knight, knight here, just d5. And then knight here, I usually play h4, h5. Works pretty well. Something like this. I think white just has good pressure. Plus, by the time black gets around to taking this, we can often sack for two pawns, like in the game. Yeah, I mean, like, if I want to, knight takes b6 is available. And then here, obviously, taking is a good thing, but I still needed to I needed to play a bit better here. I'm not sure exactly what we, we should have done, but... Better moves needed to exist in this exact moment. Still, th uh, this is pretty much a win for me, like, um, from the opening. In terms of what I'm looking for from this opening, if I get this every time, I gotta be happy. Because it's not gonna get better than this. Right? Getting your knight uh, to trade for another knight? Perfect. But still, um, yeah, overall, it was just like... Basically, computer gives draw here. Um, and I was so tilted by like people playing for a draw. Super annoying. Um, C4 is a move where once you just kind of get some ideas behind you, you know exactly what you're doing with white. I think you can play it for a win pretty easily. And black has to, I mean, he only has one line and it's this. And then you're guaranteed to get this position. And there's really only a specific set of moves that black can play to, to really get equality, or sorry, to really keep his advantage, small advantage. And if he doesn't play them, you're pretty much equal-ish, equal-ish. And it's just a dynamic game where you can still play for a win, especially in blitz. Hey, system player against speedy player once again. The rematch. The heavyweights. for this not usually my favorite way of playing this line but it has its moments yeah takes takes bishop a6 rook here I've seen this before and it's like bishop c7 rook a8 Bishop b7, king d7. Is this it? It's like some weird way that my pieces get trapped. And then I take, and then king takes bishop. And then I take here, then rook b8. I've definitely seen this before. Yeah, I believe that's... I believe that's a thing.
as a opening trap you can fall into is white. move. I didn't really look at what movie did. If I did, then <laughs> this probably would have been played. I don't know if it's actually uh, safe for me to take that pawn yet or not, but that move looks a little bit off. Okay, takes takes bishop a6. What are we really saying here? Rook here, bishop there. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna do it because like I can't believe that <laughs> it doesn't work. The thing is, takes rook here, bishop e7, doesn't trap my bishop. Um, I want to play this. Bishop takes, rook here, bishop b7, rook takes, bishop takes, and like, I'm kind of trapped, but maybe I can take a bunch of pawns, eh, it's probably worth a try. This one is no good, so I gotta take this. Bishops are doing some weird gymnastics here. Taking is definitely not at all what white wants to do, or black wants to do, so. Bishop here is a reasonable move to like cut off a square, but it also hands me the next move, the initiative.
I think I might just keep my pawns, honestly. Good move. But we can try to get these pawns going now. Not great. Still though. These pawns are pretty dangerous. I still think white is better. Should be winning. Just bring the rook down. Yeah. Wasn't totally accurate. If they didn't like my move right there at the end, e4, but. Yeah. This is better for white, but uh, it's quite confusing. Also, bishop b6 could have been played because of pawn takes. Didn't really notice that. This is just good for me, though. Yeah, maybe I could have played this for a4. In any case, um, I knew the position was good for me. Just such a tough one to calculate. Like, your head hurts trying to make sure your bishop doesn't get trapped and everything. Right. White pieces. London. What's it going to be this time? We've seen this before. B6, bishop f5, bishop g4, queen b6. Bishop there will go back. Castle, bishop d3. We've seen all of this before. It should be very routine. B6, E4. And if he takes on E4, then I think we already have a good position. He might take and play Bishop B7. I mean, it's... This is all the most natural stuff. We take and we play queen a4. This is what we're going for. We have ideas like bringing the rook in, even b4. This bishop can run out of squares. Played this line a bunch of times, so these moves are kind of routine.
At the very least, we've got him thinking, you know? Time advantage. Get this guy out of here. Get him out of here. We've had this before. I've definitely had this exact win many, many times in my career. The old 12 second win. We'll eat ass for cash. Six month prime resub. We love an ass eater around here. Interesting. Uh huh. Queen here. We're not gonna fall for that, are we? However, queen takes knight b5. I got some good energy. I'm trying to go here. Support that knight. Knight f3. Don't need to do anything crazy here. Just bishop d3, castle. Depends what he gets up to here. Um, that move looks highly suspicious. Knight looks very misplaced there, I gotta say. And, oh, buddy, if you think you're castling, you got another thing coming. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Some bad things are going to happen to good people here. Bad things will happen to good people. Let's just get castled. Can't take with the pawn. Venture this way, good sir. Knight b5, I guess we'll go here. Option to take as well though. I'm gonna play rook here. It's offering me this. I'm a greedy Guillermo right now. I'm gonna take that. I don't care about your G file, bud. 
That's a pawn. And maybe more. Looks fine. I think I am gonna have to go after this game, guys. Um, gotta get my laundry. <laughs> no, I have, uh, <laughs> not only do I have to get my laundry, but I also have to go. Um, could be some tricks here. So it's gonna be my last one for today. We're gonna leave everybody blue balled for 2,900 and for 2,500. Okay, rook here, I'll take. And where do we want to put this? We need seven. He's getting into my squares. Let's take that. Keep life simple. Hello, Dr. Lord Mayo. Thanks for the host there, Attila Turzo. This queen can sit pretty nicely on e5. Bishop b6 is a very strong idea. Hey, no worries, Kang. Take a break from Rocket League, play some chess. Love to see it. Does seem like another slow dude, eh? It certainly does. Probably play B3. This move will be more or less forced. Wow. Knight B5, okay. I don't want to play this. Three pass pawn, okay, two connected pass pawns, but we've definitely got some stuff going for us here. GG. Not bad. All right, let's go here. Slunt Daddy for the four months. Accelerated London. I've never heard of that term in my life. MN2197, thanks for the 21 months. All right, so we do get a D6 from the guy, but I'm gonna stick to this approach. Knight F3. H3 is always a nice one to get in. But because this exchange has already happened, let's just get castled. Looking for b5, maybe? We do want to play a4, but I don't think we need to do it right away. I can play a next move. Okay. 
Queen? I think Queen. And I'm gonna play this h3 move while we can. Knight to a5 is a nice little maneuver here. Even queen a5. This one, uh, well, I mean, yeah, if we take, then this guy drops. Not what you want. If I go all the way back, then e4, I don't really have the, uh, I don't really have the d2 square available for my pieces. You know, the other thing we could do is we could take and then just go back. Um, and I might end up doing something like that. Even taking and going back here. It just means that after this, I have knight d4 available, which I think is probably a good thing. Because right now, bishop g3 can be played with knight h2, but that looks, I don't know, it looks so wrong. It looks so wrong. However, knight h2, I get to e3. I could see that being, uh, being kind of nice. It looks wrong, but d5 is pretty much forced after e4 because of the pawn. And then knight f1, knight e3. I could see that working. When you do pawn and then bishop, chess.com calls it the accelerated London. Interesting. I think the London is literally d4 bishop f4. So I can see how that's confusing. But yeah, I don't know what this accelerated London is. d4 bishop f4 is just the London. Knight c4 is uh, looking great here. Yeah, always annoying to have this bishop here instead of there, but we had to because we needed the h2 square for our knight, so I can't complain. But yeah, having to deal with, uh, with that is annoying, very annoying. Takes is one thing, but I think I might go queen a5 here. Getting ready to take that back. Now, if we take here, the rook up there, is that what we want though? It looks really sketchy to have my rook loose there. So I might take this first. Do this. Okay, but now this pawn is a little bit strange. So let's save this bishop. I think we can just go all the way back to f1. If he wants to, uh, you know, give me an isolated pawn on d4, just like him, then he's gonna have to give away his dark square bishop, which is not very appetizing. Sandwich enjoyer, thanks for the one year. Twitch Prime, appreciate it, dude. No, Eduardo. I got my laundry done yesterday. Okay. Don't want to give up that bishop for no reason. Rookie seven is uh, coming up. You can go here, but I'm not entirely convinced by this. Rook a4 intends rook b4, which is nice. That's a move, that's a move. Ok, 
Okay, rook takes a6 is fine, but it allows knight takes d4. Whereas rook b4, this knight has to move, and I'm not sure it's entirely happy to do so. Knight a5, bishop c7, should be winning. And knight d2, boy, that looks weird. <laughs> uh... Rook here, I guess maybe he wants to go bishop there. Because I can't stop his knight from going everywhere. I'd love to play move f3 and b3 and just stop, like, keep the knight in there, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to try though. Let's go bishop here. Knight there, b3. Knight there, f3. We're going to try to contain this piece. Restrict it. I think bishop f4 is a good one. Dr. Pharaohs with a five month Risa. Welcome back. Welcome back. Rook b6 is going to be a strong move next. Also hitting that. Ooh, that's a good reply. That is a good reply. Really don't want to take that, but I think we gotta. Because knight c4 is about to happen, which uh, looks annoying enough. Let's go here. And probably have to start pushing these pawns. I'd love to. Get the king in there. Let's keep that rook out just for a sec. I want to deal with all that noise. I mean, I guess it's just a draw. I guess it's just a draw. favor to play this move because yeah. now I have five point um, one seconds or whatever so this is gonna be 50 moves I think he's just gonna go for a draw but I can pre move this without losing my bishop and 50 moves is gonna hit before the end of the game so I'm not really gonna lose that game anyway but um, maybe rook b6 was a little hasty. I thought I was winning a piece, honestly. I just didn't even bother thinking of bishop b5. Um, I think rook b6 is still a good move, but had I seen that, I would have played this move. And then rook b6, because now I'm pinning it. I'm like, maybe going to win the bishop. I'm definitely going to win a pawn. You know, huge advantage for white. <laughs> um, but I did rook b6 kind of quick. I actually thought I was just winning a piece. And after this, it's still a great position for white, but given the time situation, I would have to take probably play bishop e5, maybe rook a1, but I'm giving him a knight against my bishop and the time, I don't know. I felt like that knight could like easily outplay the bishop somehow. And I tell you the five minute pool, this is where the old dogs chill, you know, those, those wily FM, IMs, been getting some strong players who are Undoubtedly slow, but I'm not necessarily playing too fast either. I'm kind of sharing my thoughts. So I'm playing just as slow and And these guys are I think I'll play a knight f3 system here um, And these guys are You know putting some moves together Maybe e3 so if we're playing just as slow as one another, they don't really have any uh, 
Any weaknesses? Let's go here. It's definitely a weird song. It's a good original, but it's a really bad remix. Let's play bishop h2, queen b6, uh, oops, can't draw an arrow. b5 is mildly concerning. I feel like you almost need to play a4 here, whether you like it or not. Just one of those moves. Um, in this particular moment, I'm very attached to this move, d5. I think I'm going to do it and play e4 and queen e2 and sort of turn this into like a Benoni, basically. This square is covered, which is nice. Um, yeah, queen e2, knight d2, knight c4, rook e1, maybe bishop back. A lot of good moves here. Okay, so I think he's trying to play maybe e5, and if I took... And he took with a rook, would he be okay there? I think not after rook e1. Now I can take and go bishop c4. Definitely pre-move that. Yeah, bishop c4 should be too strong here. I think it's rather uncomfortable. Maybe five still drops it, and rook f8 or rook e7, I'm gonna play bishop d6, no matter what. Yeah, so he has to play this. Now, what are my options? If I take this. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, I'm still hitting f7. which he can defend with a move like that. Hmm. The other option is just pawn takes. And then I wonder after h6, can I play knight in? To e6, I definitely think I can. So I'm I'm a big fan of knight e6 next after h6, so I'm gonna do this. I have e7 check and kind of opening things up. Let's take. Uh, Sechinoka, thanks for the 14 months with Prime. If we bring this over here, what's gonna happen? Queen f5, right? Trade the queens, we're up a pawn. Also, maybe don't want to deal with that, so. Keep things simple. Cartman, welcome back for 22 months with Prime. Peace, brah. Yeah, now the pawns are safe from both bishops. Um. It's a little bit of a surprising move, but I see what he's up to. He wants to mass simplify. Let's 
So, takes, rook takes, a8. Takes, and then how does this end game go? Bishop d6, if he's gonna play b4. tricky and if here he plays b4 anyway hmm. we don't have a lot of time so this will play this Take it and go b3, and strangely after bishop c3, I kind of want to go bishop f8. I don't know if that's any good. I'm trying to keep this king in there. Thought I was being a little bit tricky. Get back on this diagonal now. It's the better one to be on. Oh, he's gonna resign. See, that's why it's nice playing the uh, the older gentlemen. They understand chess, the gentleman's games, the respect resignation. I think I had a fairly good shot here. You know, my king can uh, run to h2, g3. These pawns push really easily. But yeah, I mean, he's obviously, would, he would be just going for the flag here. All right, we've got a fairly standard one, queen b6. Okay, we'll go back. I think these positions are always better for white. Very comfortable here. Probably bishop to h3, castle. I think I want to bring this knight to e3 no matter what. So I'm going to do it now. Interesting. Okay. Rookie one. guess that just works. He's playing in such a weird way, it just looks like so bad. But now e5 is like, it's just gonna work. That's what I'm saying, man. The five minute crew, I'm telling you, are tough to deal with. I think we're gonna have to play this. Probably take. Five minute gangsters. Definitely in hindsight, knight f1 was like, you know, should just castle there. 
I just did not think he was going to play the move F6 at all. It just really wasn't on my mind. Um, 95, how is that? Is it a bit much? It's a bit much. King g2 is like safe. Takes here is an idea, but I don't really like the idea of uh, dropping that h pawn so easily. Is here like. I don't know. I don't feel that great about the line. But it's not much of an alternative, so king up. Something like this, I think we just get our knight into e5. Now, that's kind of a threat. Uh, do I really want to take that? God, I don't want to take that. On F4, I mean. That would be really unfortunate. All right. I am gonna do the nasty. On takes F4. Gross. I can play King H3, but it really looks wrong. Um, Rook H1, I was looking at. Rook here, I was thinking king f1. Look, the pawn on f4 is definitely trash, but you know, if it supports my knights getting around, getting something threatened, can't hate it too much. I'm definitely thinking about an 85 and then sacking the rook there. The other thing is knight g5, but it seems a little less trustworthy somehow. Is knight g5 bad? I don't think so. I just don't really have an answer to something like knight e7 and my f pawn hangs. Like, that's a pawn I actually can't defend, strangely enough. I found it a little annoying.
Rook e7, maybe knight here. Rook f8, I think queen e6 check. Takes knight g5. I don't know what the threats are here, but we've got that's one threat with the queen there. Knight e6 is just another move that looks kind of good. Queen takes h5, I guess, too. This is, uh, I would say, it's the main one. Just go back and forth for now. I think he's gonna try to play for the win. Teams are not easy, are they? Really not easy. Obviously, our job could have been much simpler playing king e3, but I simply didn't expect him to go here. I thought he'd go here, so then that's why I played king e4. But uh, yeah, I knew that he was going to try to play for a win here by going king a5, which is helpful, at least. After f5, I thought this was likely. d4 is the move he didn't play here. And then even still, he probably has a draw. But now after knight d4, I think white's probably winning. Anthony playing five minute chess. Yeah, right. Although I think Anthony helped me out with the algorithm. I got the white pieces again. So go Anthony. It was all worth it. We gamed the system. Worth. Okay, e3. Even a3 or queen b3 is possible there, but keep it simple. we better take this back and then knight d5 i think knight e2 guards both i know that's what i'm saying anthony it's tough to find it pairing at all but you helped me out somehow i got the white pieces again Worth. I think he'll probably take and just maybe castle, but honestly, that 
Knight on c6 is a pawn that I think I'll take. I am not above being that greedy. Not above it. Oh, I'm so far below it, Zon Jones. You have no idea, bud. <laughs> I'm in the basement. Castle a3 forces this, then there's no c5. His pawns are so weak that if we get into some any kind of regular position, I'm probably gonna be much better. Takes takes castle looks great for me. The other move is 92, if for some reason I want to do that. I don't know if I love that move. Huh? Although maybe I have D takes E5 then. 92 takes takes. I'm being very greedy even calculating this, but Bishop D7, Queen A5. And if rook b8, I have b4, and everything looks held together. I think it's too much. I have evaluated that it is too much. Although Castle's rook b8 is actually a little annoying, but I guess we'll just take all these pawns. Queen c6, queen c7 next. Yeah, it's a pretty good song, huh? Not too bad. I think this playlist is uh... good vibes. It's a very aggressive move. Now the knight gets d4. Everything's good now. I'm taking all your pawns, bud. Everything you got. Like I said, everything. All right. I think easiest way to do this After he takes, I want to go rook there. I think he wants to do this bishop move, though. Which kind of slows things down. Hmm. Um...
Hard to say what the best way to actually win this is. Kind of weird. Let me go back here. I don't think he should take this. I don't think he will. Bishop d3 or queen d5 look like reasonable moves. I think this is the simplest. Well, I was thinking here and take that, but obviously knight e6 does the same thing, but better. Wins the queen. You don't want to pre-move rook takes queen, and you don't want to pre-move rook takes queen. Being on the wrong end of a pre-move here would be pretty embarrassing. All right, GG. What's up guys? I'm here in Vegas after my chess boxing fight uh, that you guys might have seen. This was the last episode of our London series speed run. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well as the whole series. We got lots more of these on our YouTube channel, so make sure to check them out. Turn on the post notifications as well so you don't miss a new video and don't forget to subscribe.